That's pretty. What's up, guys? Back at the shop. On a Saturday, Saturday morning, actually. Really early Saturday morning. Not by choice. Well, I mean, everything's by choice, but if I, if I had the ideal choice, I would not be here. Um, what I'm doing, well, first off, show y'all how early it is. It's 308, 309, excuse me, uh, AM. Yeah, AM. Um, painted this Jeep last night. And I, you know, just take a look around, okay? I'm giving away my secrets here. But this is not a official paint booth. I get that. Um, I do my very best to make it as official as it can be, but I cannot control the temperature very well out here. Um, even though, I mean, it's, it's all rain off the same shop, but since everything's so walled off from the other shop, it doesn't stay as warm out here. We got heat lamps and stuff to help uh, keep the temperature up. And most of the time we can get it around there, which is fine for painting. It just, you have to kind of adjust on the fly. And sometimes I adjust wrong. So that's what happened here. <clears throat> got a run in the quarter panel on this thing. Um, I mean, just right after making the first couple passes i looked down and i seen it was sagging right here i'm like well that's not so bad and so i just kept going but my whole first coat of clear on went down in the office and waited for the the flash time because you have to let clear set for a while came back out and that run it looked like i had painted niagara falls on the side of the jeep so the run got a lot worse as we waited and this thing has to go today, which is Saturday. So, I, well, I mean, it doesn't have to go today. I'm sure if I called the customer and was like, hey, ma'am, um, I messed up. I can't get it done today. I mean, what, what else is she going to do? She's going to she's gonna figure it out just like everybody else would. But, you know, we'd all have to figure it out if somebody called and said that. <clears throat> but I definitely don't want to uh, I don't want to do that I don't want to make that call I'd rather be here this early so my goal is if it gets down to it and I have to repaint this quarter panel or re-clear coat it I don't think I'd actually have to fully repaint it ever but if it got to, down to where I actually had to re-clear coat this quarter panel I could do it and still have enough time for it to dry before the end of the day today and get it put back together and delivered. So that was my thoughts on getting here this early. But by the looks of it, it it's looking like it's gonna sand out. When I seen the run, I put an extra coat of clear right in the area where the run is to give me enough to sand on. And I think it's it's sanding out pretty good. I just I hate chancing that stuff, you know. <laughs> I do everything I can do to try to make every paint job as perfect as possible because I mean let's be honest, why would I want less than perfect paint jobs coming out of here? It just doesn't make sense as a as a new business to do that, but it happens, you know. Um stuff happens. It, paint game is so crazy because stuff can go south real quick. It doesn't matter how many hours you spent prepping or sanding or, you know, whatever. When you're holding that gun, I mean, just a split second decision of stopping or going just a, a fraction of a second too slow can cause a run. Um, tripping over your paint hose can cause a run. Uh, or, you know, stuff can happen to where Something gets contaminated in the airline, give you silicone. Um, like I've said in the past, my biggest fight out of here, I would say, is dust getting into the clear coat. Um, and that leaves little, you know, little specks on the surface that you have to go through and wet sand and buff. 
most of the time I can get them out um, pretty good. But every once in a while there's a few that I just, I can't get out um, without repainting. So the goal, every single time I paint something, the goal is perfection. Sometimes I win, sometimes I don't. Try to make it right on every one. Now if you're a budget job, which this one, this one is a budget job too. It's a, a, a friend of my wife's, but it's also a friend of my wife's. So I'm not thinking of it as a, as a budget job. I'm uh, trying to make this thing as good as possible. So I'm gonna be wet sanding some more. Um, Mike, the owner of the 64, is supposed to be coming out this morning. He's gonna put his motor in. So that'll be cool. He's gonna bring the motor out. So that way we can get the front end together on that thing and uh, get it block sanded one more time, get prepped, get it in here and start painting it. So I'm excited about that. But I'll uh, turn the camera back on when I get this all sanded up. Started sanding the run with 800 grit on a block. This is just a Dura block, sanding block, uh, skinny one, just kind of cut down, a little easier for me to use in smaller areas. Um, started sanding on it with 800 grit, wet, of course. And then this is a thousand. I'll go to fifteen hundred grit on the hand paper, and then I switch over to three thousand grit on a DA and five thousand grit on a DA. It's the Trizac sheets. That's what they look like. I got them in a bucket of water over here. This is three thousand grit. It almost feels like like a wool material. And your 5,000 grit feels like a bed sheet. I mean, it's soft. But 5,000 grit's pretty impressive stuff because it'll actually put a pretty good shine on the paint before you even start buffing. It makes buffing a lot easier. So I'll, uh, I'll turn the camera back on after I get this thing all buffed up and uh, show you guys what it looks like after that. That's where we're at. I know it's black. And it's really hard to see, especially on camera. But there's no run anymore. Um, you can see a little bit of haziness and some like fine scratches on it. But that's because it's black and it was painted. It's painted about eight hours ago. So anything you do on this surface scratches the crap out of it. So now that I know at least the run is going to come out or it's out, um, I can go ahead and let it sit. I'll wait until normal morning hours um, or even early afternoon. Let it sit for a while and then come back in and rebuff it and uh, wipe it all down and everything. And that'll take care of all the little light scratches. I just wanted to make sure the bulk of that was actually going to come out. So little one up here it's hard to focus on black you see a little bit of haziness right there but it's just because I haven't finished buffing it but yeah glad it came out I'll show you guys a six foe the motor starts going in it well I didn't film the uh, the motor install because it was a it was a fight. <laughs> Mike did most of the work, um, but I helped a little, a little. But there she is. Oh man! If you were wondering what the motor was <laughs> and a four speed. That is, I mean, it's hard to argue with that. It's hard to argue with that picture right there. I mean, just, if we could just take a second and look at it. Just look at it. Good looking. So yeah, that was a good Saturday. Got my uh, final piece cut out for the frame. I'm gonna weld it in. I didn't want to weld this close to the Impala, but um, 
next week I'll scoot it over and get that welded in and then just wave my hand over it and have all the seams welded on this. So I got that Jeep uh, delivered, customer picked it up. She was super happy with it. Um, got this one built, it's a little bit dusty, but um, front end was whoo, smashed on this thing. So I got that one built. So pretty good Saturday. Now I'm gonna go home. Been here for too long. Bad when it's four o'clock and it's already been a 14 hour day for you. It's not good.